Hello. As with many homeowners, I have a uh, sump pump in my basement which has a discharge that goes underground to get to its final discharge. And uh, in the winter, I find that this tends to freeze up if there's any uh, big snow melt or a period of warmth with rain followed by a freeze, and then the sump pan uh, can't uh, discharge properly. Now I do have a battery-backed sump pump which discharges entirely separately all above ground, but for the primary pump I've uh, experimented over the years trying to find a better way for the emergency discharge of that, um, and the solution I've used in recent years is to put a T in the regular sump line as shown in this photo, and then one branch of that goes uh, through a flexible hose and then underground uh, that's shown in the bottom of the picture. And then the other branch goes horizontally and um, out through a hole in the wall, uh, which I can tap into with a flexible hose and run it anywhere in the yard I'd like to. Now, uh, this photo confusingly shows an additional line which runs sort of towards the front of the uh, photo. That's actually the discharge line from the battery back sump pump. It's got nothing to do with the purpose of this video. So what I've decided to do now is replace that flexible outside hose which tends to follow the uh, surface of the ground which isn't level and uh, replace it with a rigid pipe at a fixed angle which is sure to always drain out properly. This video is about how I put that together in case my ideas for how I did it can be useful to somebody else. Uh, my discharge to get to the driveway which slopes away from the house uh, it's about 16 feet horizontally from where the uh, sump discharge comes through the wall and a drop of about 14 inches. So I uh, bought uh, four pre-cut pieces of inch and a half PVC pipe, each of those five feet long, and uh, I wanted to assemble them in such a way that they would break down easily during the warmer months for storage, and yet assemble quickly and easily uh, when needed in certain uh, times of the colder part of the year. In addition to the four lengths of PVC pipe, I also bought four PVC unions of the size that matches inch and a half inch pipe, an inch and a half uh, 90 degree elbow, and uh, four uh, shelf rails, four short shelf brackets, and four uh, PVC uh, caps, which you'll see how those get used later along with uh, some bolts and uh, galvanized metal stakes. I forgot to mention that there was also an inch and a half uh, PVC uh, threaded bushing, which is necessary to terminate it to the threaded fitting I have where the sump discharge comes out of the house. Uh, due to the layout of my house and where my driveway is relative to the sump discharge, I wanted the pipe to make a 90 degree bend and then follow the wall out towards the driveway. So the first thing I needed to do is use the uh, threaded fitting uh, short piece of inch and a half uh, PVC pipe and one side of one of the unions and uh, attach those together with PVC cement. Then the other half of this assembly is the elbow another short length of uh, the inch and a half inch PVC pipe and the other half of the first union again attached together with PVC cement. When the two halves of the union are mated up I have a elbow that can be screwed into the existing threaded pipe where it comes in from the uh, or comes in through the wall. Since I have four sections of pipe I divided the uh, 16 foot and a little bit longer uh, pipe run that I'm going to have into uh, three sections uh, that are fairly long plus a shorter fourth section. Each of those sections will be joined together with a union except for the first section which goes directly into the uh, 90 degree elbow and then through its union. I completed the first section by 
uh, cementing half of a union onto its far end. Uh, keep in mind with this, you always need a, a male half of a union at one end of a pipe section and a female half of a union at the other end of the section. The uh, second and third pipe sections are done just the same way but without the elbow, uh, each having a male union half at one end and a female union half at the other end. In this uh, picture you can see all four sections. The one on the right is the one with the elbow, there's the two middle ones, um, and then there's the uh, one on the left which is the one that will need trimming to length once everything's in position. Now I uh, screwed up a little bit here and I'd mix the pipes up and the one that I intended to be on the end was the one that became the third section. It didn't really matter except the lengths aren't quite as equal as I'd envisioned them originally. But when they're all assembled it doesn't make any difference. So here's uh, the fitting where it comes out of the wall uh, from the sump discharge and I've got my first little piece with the uh, threaded adapter and half of a union threaded into it and then um, I use the union to couple on the first pipe section with the elbow and I uh, just laid it down on the ground. Likewise the uh, other three sections just connected onto the first section using their uh, unions which uh, makes pretty quick work of it and uh, I like this approach although the cost of the unions um, is certainly a little bit extravagant. I probably could have just stuck the pieces of pipe together with simple uh, sleeves uh, but I worried about keeping them together. I didn't want to put screws into them so I, I popped for the extra cost of the unions. The uh, pipe of course sags under its 16 plus foot length and while it might be okay uh, I wanted to support it and uh, temporarily I just stuck a cinder block under the middle of it to prop it up a little bit but then I got to work on making uh, a more permanent support system. I have these four PVC caps sized to go over the end of the shelf rails that I bought and I uh, drilled a pilot hole and then enlarged the pilot holes to a size suitable to fit the galvanized steel spikes that I bought and therefore these can be staked into the ground as if they were giant spikes. The uh, spikes extend through the uh, hole in the uh, PVC cap and the heads of the spikes will sit down flat and the bottom of the cap is shown here. With a spike uh, firmly inside the PVC cap I placed one of the shelf rails down in it right against the head and marked uh, the location for a cross hole that would go through the end of the shelf rail and uh, correspondingly through the sides of the PVC cap and then drilled the uh, the holes in each of the four shelf rails. I drilled the cross holes in the PVC caps and uh, got a, a stainless steel bolt with a stainless steel jam nut uh, to secure it and that would pass through the cap uh, through the end of the shelf rail and back through the cap into the nut and the this would hold the uh, shelf rail firmly down on top of the head of the spike. Uh, once all four uh, spikes had been assembled then um, I wanted to completely seal this so that any rain or snow uh, that would get in there wouldn't fill up the the caps and potentially rust uh, anything on the rail so I filled the whole cap with uh, uh, silicone sealant of the kind you use for sealing up a window or a bathtub or something. Starting at the uh, the high end of the uh, angled pipe I jammed one of the giant spikes and shelf rail assemblies into the ground up to the point where the PVC cap touched the ground and then stuck one of the uh, shelf brackets into the uh, shelf rail at a height that was good to go under the PVC pipe, rested the pipe on it and then I used one of these velcro straps of the kind that 
has the hooks on one side, the loops on the other, and you can wrap them around hoses or cables. And that was a, a good way, I think, of uh, securing the uh, pipe to the stake. It's not that the pipe is going anywhere, it's that the stake could lean one side or the other and potentially come out from under the pipe. So running the strap around makes sure that the uh, stake remains in a position to support the pipe. Likewise, uh, the otherwise identical uh, spike assemblies can go near each of the unions heading down the pipe with only the uh, shelf bracket assembled to the shelf rail at a different height. Even though I'd uh, made a, a fourth spike and rail assembly for the lowest end of the pipe, I uh, found that it didn't really make much sense to use it down there since the pipe's so close to the ground and I just stuck a, a, a fraction of a piece of cinder block under it for the final support instead of using one of the spikes. So I uh, found that this arrangement worked very well and um, while more expensive than just running a flexible pipe it does have the advantage of always uh, draining free so it can't possibly freeze up and I uh, have basically shimmed the low end of the pipe up above the uh, sloped driveway enough that uh, the end of the pipe won't end up in a frozen puddle. It'll always uh, drain clear and uh, I'm quite happy with the solution although it's certainly not the least expensive way of doing it. Hope this helps you.